thank you for joining me today for three achievable growth hacks to unlock your potential. So as I said, we've got lots, lots to cover. And in today's webinar, we're gonna really focus on why it's so important to know who your ideal client is and to picture them and to actually, we'll actually go through how, well, how, why it's so important and how to do it. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at, the second growth hack, is the processes that increase revenue and decrease cost. And we're going to look at the third growth hack, which is the holy grail of low cost systems for service based businesses. So there's loads of systems out there, but let's look at the holy grail. Um, tried and tested. I've been using these systems for um, nearly 10 years with my clients and basically the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So one of my clients has increased net profit by 45% year on year. So keep on watching this webinar to find out how. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Who am I? I'm Julia Blake. I've been running Blake Consultants for nearly 10 years and we help businesses grow. Now, why do I do what I do? Well, I want to make, well, I want to help business owners make more of what they have so that they can help more people in turn and have a positive impact on the world around us, basically. So I help business owners break through the barriers that are holding them back. And um, I reduce the very typical feast and famine that goes on in a business, because when you're delivering, then you can't be developing very easily. So I really focus on that. It's really important when we think about our businesses to actually try and work out why we do what we do, okay? Because success doesn't breed happiness. Happiness breeds success. So it's very important before embarking on any type of growth journey or any type of investment of energy into anything that it is the right thing for you. So if you're unsure about that, or if you think maybe you've lost your way a little bit, then I've written a, a blog recently, which explains why it's really important to love what you do and do what you love. And we look at the Ikagi um, Japanese model. So it's about what you love, what you're good at, what you're paid for, what the world needs, and then it sort of joins it all together, okay? So the link is in the presentation, but it is something worth popping over because it does take a huge amount of investment of energy and time, doesn't it, to run your own business. So make sure it's the right thing for you, okay? But we're not focusing on that today, but that is just a little bit of help. So my aim today is to share three top achievable hacks to unlock your growth potential. Okay, but not only that, we are also going to think about why an organization needs to be nurtured. Um, if you think of an organization as a living entity that needs to have some investment of time and energy to nurture it, then um, you're halfway there. Okay, it doesn't just happen. You have to work hard, but also you have to work hard in the right way, <laughs> if you like. So it, an organization does have to be nurtured. And sometimes we have to take a step back to nurture, to really sow the seeds, to invest the time so that we can harvest it later. Okay, so I also want to show you that by having more headspace, by having a reduction in stress, because let's face it, running your own business is stressful, then you will have more time to think, you'll have more time to be creative, you'll have more time to be productive, and hopefully you will enjoy running a business more, because when you enjoy something, obviously, then it's easier to invest energy into it. Okay, so the three most important, well, the three components that we're really looking at are um, growth hacks. What does that actually mean? Well, actually, you know, it's a phrase that's bandied about, it's been around for about five years. What it actually means is focus on growth. So some big organizations might have a growth hack person who focuses on growth and that's all they do. As a business owner, we wear many hats, don't we? Of course, we wear finance, marketing, business development, sales, managing director, operations, et cetera, et cetera. So this is about focusing on growth. So we're putting that hat on and we're focusing on growth. Okay. Key to anything, being organized. It really is so important when you're running your own business. And we're going to look at processes and systems to support us in being organized. The end result basically is an increase in net profit. So to sum up, I help ambitious business owners grow their business, increase net profit by having the right processes and systems in place to help them be more organized so let's just focus a little bit on being organized because let's face it we could all be a little bit more organized being organized 
you know, it's one of those things like you said, somebody that's a little wound up, calm down, and you say somebody's in a bit of a mess, be more organized. It doesn't help. But when you focus on what being more organized gives you, then it makes it easier to just take a step back, just invest a little bit of time and energy into being more organized. So being more organized, organized reduces your overwhelm. It reduces stress. It saves time finding things, fixing things, because you don't say, make so many mistakes. It enhances productivity by creating more time and it gives you the ability to make more of that time. It gives you headspace to reflect, learn and grow. And let's face it, if we don't reflect, learn and grow, how are we gonna grow our businesses? It gives us the opportunity to transition to the next stage of business growth through the reflection and learning, okay? Basically, having the right systems and processes in place to be more organized means that we won't ever let a bad day be an unproductive day because we'll have the right systems and processes in place to prompt us to do things, even though we're not feeling like that's the best thing to do at the time. Even, you know, we all have bad days, so the systems and processes prompt us to do things that otherwise you might have forgotten to do. Okay, but how? Where do you start? Well, that's what today is all about. Here it is. Here we go. Let's get stuck in. Growth hack number one. Know your ideal client. Now, people that know me know that I talk about this a lot. It is absolutely key to having a successful business. It is absolutely key to growing your business. It is absolutely key to not wasting time. Simplistically, if you scattergun uh, your marketing because you don't know who your ideal client is, you're wasting time and energy and money all the time. Okay, so really, really know who they are really know where they hang out. There's no point in investing time on Instagram if your ideal client is hanging out on LinkedIn. There's no point in investing time networking if your clients are hanging out on social media. Know where they hang out. Know what their pains are. This is absolutely key. If you do not know what their pains are, then how can you possibly offer a solution to reduce that pain? Okay. So when you're thinking about your ideal client, think about these things. What are the top three problems that your ideal client experiences? What are the solutions to each of those problems? What is your unique proposition, value proposition? And what is your unfair advantage? What do you have that no one else has? What channels do you use to reach your client? It goes back to what I was saying, where are they hanging out? What are your revenue streams? What is your cost structure? So think of those things, but have an avatar. So you've now got a picture of your ideal client. You now need to have an ideal client persona or avatar, as I call it, other people call it personas. So have an avatar. What you're actually doing is creating an imaginary person and naming them. Now, the power of that is in the fact that whenever you are doing any marketing or creating any systems or creating any processes, you have that avatar, that imaginary person in the front of your mind. In fact, imagine they're in the room with you. Whenever you're writing, write to the avatar. Whenever you're creating, create the avatar. Whenever you're looking at a process, think about your avatar. Whenever you're offering a service, think about what your avatar needs and what um, they need to go through. So. It is absolutely key. You want to turn that unhappy face into a happy face. And that's what you have the ability to do in your business. You are offering a solution to people's pain. Okay, so there's a lot to cover on uh, avatars. And I've just um, published um, my first ever ebook, very proud of that, um, which is titled Understand the Importance of Knowing Your Ideal Client and Create Your Own Avatar. So it goes into more detail. It goes into some more detail about what you can do with your ideal client, how to make um, the most of them, and how to create your own. There's a step-by-step -step guide, how to create your very own avatar, okay? So absolutely key, that is the first growth hack. Really, really know who your ideal client is and have them in the room with you when you're creating anything. So have that person in the forefront of your mind when you're creating anything in your business and think about their entire journey because at the end of the day, a happy client is somebody that's gonna refer you to other people, they're gonna rave about you, they're gonna write testimonials for you, they um, are gonna be happy for you to create some case studies, all of which is giving you more 
collateral to reach out to other people. Um, if you're um, interested in reading books, then the Pumpkin, um, I think it's Pumpkin Patch, I've gone blank now, is a very good book. Basically what it says is identify your ideal client and nurture them. Actually really look after them. Think about that one successful pumpkin in the pumpkin field. Why are they successful? What did you do? How much water did you give them? How much you know, um, fertilizer did you give them? Did you weed around them or did you let them have um, weeds with their complementary plants? Whatever you need to do. So think of that pumpkin as your ideal client. And then when you've really nailed that, you can go out and attract more of them. Because when you work with people that you're really adding value to, then your relationship with them is going to be brilliant and you are going to be more satisfied in the, the work that you're doing and they're going to be very satisfied in the value that they're adding and the pains that you're solving for them. Okay, so. Growth hack number two, processes and systems which increase revenue and decrease costs. That's really difficult to talk about specific processes and systems um, to increase revenue and decrease cost without a particular business in mind. Okay, it really does depend on your business model, um, mostly on your ideal client avatar. So we're going to look quite broadly at this um, and there's some takeaways that you can hopefully apply. They are simple because actually processes are simple. Processes do not need to be complicated. When you're running a micro, small or medium sized business, and actually you need simple processes. The power of knowing the process is that you can apply that process when you're actually working with the client. So if you take a step back, Think about the process, think about the idea process, think about how you would ideally like to um, move people, clients through your organization. And when it actually comes to it, you don't need to think about it. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to spend time doing it. Then you have it already sorted in your head and you give everybody a consistent level of service. Again, happy clients, what we all aspire to and aim towards. So. Basically, the right processes and systems will increase revenue and decrease costs, giving you overall an increase in net profit. That's what we're looking at here. Okay, so let's think about processes and systems. Let's take a step back. There will be an initial investment of time and energy, which is why it's so important to love what you do and, and all the rest of it because you do have to set time aside and you do have to apply and give some energy to it, but the rewards are great. The right processes and systems will provide clarity to your business. They will move your contacts through their journey with you and in an efficient and pleasant way. And that's pleasant for both you and your client. So important. You can only hold so much in your head at any one time. And I've read recently, it's between seven and nine things. So if somebody comes along when you're thinking about the third thing and they interrupt you, then you're gonna potentially forget about the other, um, you know, the, the, the rest of the things that you're in your head. So if they interrupt you on three, then you're gonna potentially forget four, five, six, seven. And if you have eight and nine in your head as well, then you're going to forget about those. And that's when balls get dropped in um, organizations or in life in general, let's face it. So you can only hold so much in your head. So having the right processes and systems in place mean that you are prompted to do things at the right time um, in the right way. So you don't drop that ball. Nothing falls by the wayside inadvertently. So, you know, don't don't try and pack stuff into your head. We all have enough stuff that's going around in our heads anyway, let's face it. So think about some systems that will support the processes so that they will remind you to do what you need to do. You will feel much better and it will give you time to, 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 to free up your time, basically, um, to be more creative because you can't be creative when you're stressed. So yeah, they'll remind you and prompt you to do um, stuff when you most need to be prompted. Okay, so let's think about a very basic pre-sales journey. Okay, so you get the initial inquiry, you qualify that, make sure that, um, that you know, you can help them and that they're a good fit for you. Uh, when we start a business, then often we just take whatever work is sort of coming along. Um, but as you progress through your business journey and start thinking about scaling up, 
then qualify um, the initial inquiry. So not to waste the other person's time, not to waste your time. If you find that you're gaining a lot of people that are asking for something specific uh, that you can't offer, then maybe think about a joint venture with somebody else or a referral scheme referring them to somebody else. Or um, think about perhaps is there something going on in your marketing that you're not attracting the right type of people. So qualify that, the, the call, the initial inquiry. When you've qualified it, then spend some time confirming the specific requirements that they have, and then you get to the proposal stage. So create the, the proposal, but follow up on the proposal. So many people I you know, come across send out proposals, and yet they don't set up a process to follow up on that proposal. So follow up on the proposal, and then you may get any edits, of course, and then hopefully at that point, there's a verbal agreement from your potential client and you can then send them the terms and conditions and you can raise your invoice or 50% of the project fee or however you do bill, okay? So think about that. Think about how um, you're invoicing people. Um, it's very typical that you will get a better investment of energy from your client into the work that you're doing together if they have already invested and committed some, some money into the, the project. Okay, you tend to find, well, um, I moved to that a few years ago and it was fascinating. Less people cancelled at the last minute. Um, there was definitely more buy-in. Um, they wanted to actually um, action what they'd agreed to action much quicker because they've already invested. They've made a financial investment. They've already bought into the project emotionally. So most people don't have a problem with that at all. Um, so think about your T's and C's and raise your invoice at that point and then schedule the work, okay? So um, when you get the T's and C's back, schedule the work. Make sure you have it all planned out, that you're not suddenly finding that you've promised to deliver something that you can't deliver. Have this in your process. At that point, the opportunity is one, so you can move it from the pipeline to delivery, um, and if, it, if you lost it, then identify why, if you, why you lost it. Have a think about that. Is there any common reason that you're losing um, of work that people aren't converting and purchasing from you, be that a product or a service, have a think about it. If there's some common things there, then you can make some changes and you can tweak what you're doing. Really review. Happy. We all wear a sales manager hat. Have a sales meeting with yourself <laughs> if you um, if you run if you're an owner managed business or if you have somebody that's doing sales, then sit down with them on a regular basis. Have a think about why you lost sales, why the successful ones went through. See if you can find any common area to either one of those and it will help you grow your business. So a very basic process here. So initial inquiry, proposal, verbal agreement, and then opportunity won or lost. Qualify, confirm, follow up, edit if necessary, send your T's and C's, raise your invoices, schedule the work, and then move from the pipeline to delivery. But have a pipeline. So many businesses that um, I come across, don't have a pipeline, they don't have that overall picture of what's going on in their business. And we need to have that overall picture of what's going on in our business. We need to know that if there's no work that's um, potentially gonna land in two months time, and yet we have a two month lead time to actually um, move somebody from lead to, to sale, then you need to start ramping up your marketing at this point to get some work in, in two months time. That's the reason for a pipeline for cash flow, um, to see what's going on, but to also analyze the work that does um, land and also the opportunities that are lost so um, you know and you have to take your own emotion out of it and just look very objectively at it so a post sales process could look something like this and again it's very difficult to actually create a process um, that um, can be used by all of you guys on, on the webinar or anybody that's watching the recording because everybody's post sales process is so different so this is the delivery this is the actual client deliver uh, process okay so you're going to deliver what you promised to deliver service or product so if it's service you're more likely to have to schedule it um, and then you deliver it so you can have some specific processes in place obviously around the delivery what you include what you need to um, research what you need to ascertain what you need to gather what you need to do feedback content all of that good stuff but basically the general process would be you schedule the work and then you deliver it 
Okay, so that's so many processes in there that we're just gonna move it because it's just not possible to, to, to delve too deeply into that. But once you've delivered that product or service, don't then just, move, don't go away, don't don't let it fall off the, way, the cliff, follow up. Check in with them, set up a process that you check in with them maybe a month after you've delivered or two weeks after you've delivered or a week after you've delivered. You know, maybe you offer an ongoing service for a month after they've purchased something from you. You know, check in with them during that time and then check in at the end. If you're offering a service, um, then, you know, wait maybe um, until that service is bedded in to their organization and see what difference it's made. Has it matched the ROI that was in the proposal, for example? but check in with them, follow up, find out how um, it's all working out for them. And then enhance an offering if it wasn't quite as they wanted or if you can see an opportunity to enhance it. But at that point, if you've got a really happy client, which hopefully you will, then you can ask for testimonials or, and perhaps have um, a case study um, about them. Lots of people really enjoy having case studies written about them because it gives them some exposure um, and some marketing collateral as well as you. So really, really great thing to do. And it helps other people that are thinking about working with you actually um, ascertain what the experience is gonna be of working with you. Okay, but basically we're thinking about the product staircase. So um, most businesses do have some type of product staircase that they're trying to move their clients along. It may be as simple as a lead magnet, perhaps a low cost uh, service or offering that you then convert somebody at the end of that onto the um, more, um, I heard somebody say the other day, the better, best and bestest instead of bronze, silver and gold. So it's that type of thing. Think about moving them along. What else can you uh, add? What value can you add to them? Think about the lifetime value of your clients to you and make sure that the clients you've got are actually fulfilling their lifetime value. You're offering a great service, a great product and adding value. So you wanna help these people. So think about your product staircase. So think about upselling, cross-selling, but basically moving people along the product staircase and that's where you have another process. If they've got to the end of their product staircase, then maybe it's a case of keeping in touch with them on a regular basis. So add to your regular communication strategy. So you will have a communication strategy for an avatar. Um, and you know, it is unusual, but you may have more than one avatar as a micro, small and medium sized business owner. Perhaps you have an avatar for your, um, your best product, but then you have an avatar for your bestest product. Maybe you have a VIP offering, that type of thing. So um, think about your overall marketing strategy, your content plan and where this client fits in with that but don't just let them fall off the ways you know off the cliff <laughs> okay right so this is where it really starts getting a little bit more busy on the screen so bear with me so you've now created your ideal client and you have um, an understanding hopefully the processes and systems are a really good thing but what do you do with them okay well you have to feed into this overall bird's eye view of um, your business, what you're trying to achieve, um, how it fits in with life, etc. So that's one step at a time. Vision. Okay, let's all start off with a vision. Most of us have a vision where we want to go in life and maybe the book business is supporting us with that or we have a vision about where we want to take our business. This is thinking about the vision for the business. Out of that, we will get some goals. Now, goals are so important. Rome was not built in a day. You don't just suddenly go out tomorrow and run a marathon unless you've been training. You have to work up to it. And that's the same in business. So you have yearly goals, break them down into quarterly, into monthly, and have some actions every day that will help you get that. So if you're running a marathon, break it down. What this, you know, this is the analogy, break it down where what distance do you want to get to by what time in what time frame and then break down what you need to do day by day you may need to change your diet you may need to um do um some yoga or pilates to get yourself fit enough to do the training for the actual running it's about thinking about those goals and breaking them down and share those goals with somebody else if you share if you write your goals down if you say them out loud and if you share them with somebody else a business partner or, or a life partner or friends or trusted friend whatever then it gives you a massive increase in achieving those goals. Um, it, most people forget about their goals by about the 2nd of January because you know, they don't spend the time in creating those goals. If you commit them to paper, 
verbalize them and share them, then that in percentage increase of um, achieving them goes to about 95%. So it's huge, it's absolutely huge. So when you're creating your goals, you're obviously gonna have your avatar in mind. And when you have um, an avatar in mind, then you can start thinking about some systems. So a CRM. Traditionally, this was a client relationship management system. Actually, I think of it as a contact relationship management system. And good ones out there will help you manage all of your content contacts, contacts, as well as your pipeline and your delivery system, your, what you're delivering, your product delivery. So you can have all of it in one place. So you've got this massive um, pot of information and knowledge, and they're not expensive, and they're absolutely phenomenal. But you can't design and create a CRM until you know who your ideal client is. Because if you have a very niche um, I, you know, the product with a very specific um, avatar um, or ideal client, so then you need to have that built in because actually sometimes you might need to exclude people from your marketing as well as include them, okay? So you um, then think of your marketing strategy, your content plan, mm -hmm. and how you're going to actually um, activate that plan throughout month or week, etc. Email marketing is part of that, obviously, marketing strategy. Encouraging people to go to your website is part of that marketing strategy. There was a time when my website seemed to go a little bit out of favor. Actually, websites are your shop window. And um, some people still have Facebook pages, business pages, and not a website. Websites are you know, the shop window into your business. They um, are the place where you put everything. And the idea is that you are encouraging people through your social media work, through your email marketing, to your website, where hopefully they will buy. You can manage your pipeline in your CRM and you can keep on top of all the customer information, including what they've bought from you, et cetera, et cetera. And that all leads to an increase in net profit. OK, so let's see how we can actually bring that a little bit more to life. So this is Growth Hack 3. What is the holy grail of affordable systems? We start off with a CRM and the one I favor is Capture CRM. It's absolutely brilliant. It gives us the ability to manage our data, manage our marketing, keep on top of our pipeline and um, deliver a great service or product. OK, that coupled with MailChimp gives us a fantastic email delivery system. You can use the automation functionality in MailChimp and it means that you can create your own sales funnel and you can, um, in, when somebody clicks, then they get a certain email. If they don't click, then they get another email. It gives you the ability to really um, help people along a communication path. It's brilliant. And the third affordable system that integrates and joins in so beautifully with these other two is Xero. I absolutely love Xero. There are other great email um, accounting systems out there, obviously, um, but Xero is brilliant. So what you get then are just three affordable systems that all work together and they are the very foundation of a business that wants to grow and wants to scale and those three systems alone will give you everything that you need to be more organized and to um, map out the processes and to systemize the processes and to encourage you down a certain process. So they are the systems that work so beautifully together. If you want to add some more on top, then of course you can, and there are other ones out there. Hootsuite is brilliant for scheduling your social media posts. So we want to um, schedule to Facebook, although you can schedule directly in Facebook. Instagram is um, really good at the moment, just because if you're a business to business, don't forget that the business, people that are in those businesses are still probably hanging out on Instagram. LinkedIn, definitely the place to be at the moment, whether you're B2B or B2C, um, it very much is the place to be. Um, and I have just written a blog actually giving you 11 top tips to make more of LinkedIn. So do pop over and have a look at that. So a huge amount of value in that, but spend some time on that as well. Check out Google Analytics, see what's happening with that traffic to your website, what they're um, spending, what pages they're spending time on, what their journey is around your website. And there's some good YouTube videos out there um, to help you make um, sense of Google Analytics. Okay, so do consider a CRM. 
Um, it gives you the ability to have everything in one place. And you can see from the um, screenshot in front of you that um, if you have uh, information about people, you have information about organizations, you um, have information about the products that they've purchased, uh, you can add files, you can um, ascertain when they were last contacted, you can see what their pipeline value is, and you can see how much um, they owe you or they have paid to you in the past. You've got a whole picture of um, an individual or an organization in front of you at your fingertips, and you can apply tasks to that as well. So this goes into a little bit more uh, information, history files, opportunities, cases, what the pipeline is, and what the invoices are. Okay, so um, you can get lots of information off your CRM. You build the CRM, as I said, depending on your ideal client avatar, um, and you design and create a CRM with the output in mind. So if you want to send specific marketing to a specific target market, then you would um, use the uh, list functionality and then you would create the list and then push it through to MailChimp so that you're sending very bespoke marketing messages out or communication out, not just marketing, communication. So that's the absolute key. When you know who your avatar is, you can send targeted communication to that group of individuals to encourage them to buy from you. So the other brilliant thing about Capture CRM is that it gives you the um, ability to manage your pipeline which is what we were talking about earlier. And you can manage your deliverables. So what we do is we set up tracks in Capsule CRM, and um, we can have a track for an opportunity or a track for a case. And a track is a series of tasks that make up the process. And what happens is that we set this up behind the scenes, and then as we tick off each of those tasks, the system will remind us on the day the next task is due. So we can therefore forget about it. So in this one, we've got send product overview document to the client on the 11th of October, and then four days later, obtain feedback. An email will be sent to the inbox, your inbox saying obtain feedback, and you will um, be able to forget about chasing that feedback for those, for those four days, resting assured that you're gonna be reminded and prompted to do that. So Capsule reminds the human to do things. It doesn't do that stuff for you, um, but it, what it does is give, freeze up your headspace because you know full well that you're giving everybody a consistent level of service. So you can have tracks, you can have multiple tracks, you can build on tracks like Lego. Um, you can have tracks and opportunities and you can have tracks in your deliverables. So what that means is that you're giving everybody a consistent level of service which makes them happy um, and means you can build on it and improve it, tweak it, enhance it, but you get you have happy clients. As far as pipeline and opportunities is concerned, if you have a track that you um, that people go down, you know, not everybody will go down it and you can tweak it and you can change it for individuals, but you have a process that is tried and tested and it will give you the best chance possible of converting that lead to a sale. Okay, so how does this work in practice? Now, the last, the, the one with all of the, um, the ovals on was busy, but this is, we're gonna go back to it and we're gonna apply these systems to that um, working. So we've got a vision. Um, we, we, we touched on this, but if you wanna look more than there are great YouTube videos about how to create your own vision board um, and having a vision board perhaps in front of your PC or your laptop or on the screen of, of your iPad or phone means that you're connected emotionally with a vision, which helps you through the, the days that aren't going quite so well um, because you're, you're, um, you, you have that vision in front of you, okay? The vision feeds into the goals. The goals feed in to your avatar. Your avatar feeds into the design and the creation of the CRM that you're gonna be really using um, as a massive foundation. We favor Capsule, I favor Capsule. The CRM obviously directly links to your email marketing and the marketing strategy is directly related to your avatar. Know who your avatar is and you will have a successful marketing strategy and marketing plan and content plan. Use something like Hootsuite to schedule your social media um, messages um, and repurpose your blogs, really make use of your content. So if you're writing, if you, you have a blog that's part of your content um, plan, then there will be three to five pertinent points in that blog that you can share in different social media posts. So one blog can give you a month's worth of social media posts, obviously, um, 
work out where your avatar is hanging out as to where you need to focus your energy um, and the way that people communicate on LinkedIn is different to Instagram, it's different to Twitter, it's different to Facebook. So the um, underlying message would be the same but the semantics will be slightly different and the time of day and the frequency of posting will be different and this is why Hootsuite is really good. So save yourself some time, set some time aside each week Go back to your content plan, have a look and see what messages you're going to be sending out that week and schedule them all so that they're going out. You, that doesn't mean saying that you don't engage with people on social media. You do, of course, but this gives a basis for the content that's going out. So regular, consistent and value add is so important on social media because what you're doing is attracting people that are currently unknown to you to you. So people, there's a, there's a whole, you know, your avatar is out there, but they don't know you exist yet and you certainly don't know who they are. So what you're doing is using social media to go out and reach out to the universe. What you're doing then is encouraging them to perhaps swap some um, data um, or completely, we do a lot of GDPR work, so this is absolutely legit, you know, this is absolutely fine, this is what businesses do, this is what you should be doing. Provide some gated content, a gated content, um, piece of collateral means that somebody is swapping something to get through that gate. So in effect, they're giving you their email address um, in the, to swap for something. So I have an ideal client um, avatar ebook and that's gated content. It's jam ram packed with um, help and value. And so people give their email address and swap it for that for that content. So People are attracted to you through your marketing and when you know who your avatar is, you're not scatter, you don't have a scattergun approach. So you are picking up more, you're engaging with more people because what you're saying is resonating with them. Okay, so um, when you can also obviously have email marketing as part of that strategy and again, when you're creating your content on your email marketing, have your avatar in mind, talk to their pain and then you set yourself up as the person that's solving that pain, you're validating that. Um, and then when that other, when the person, the potential client, realizes they have the pain, because sometimes of course they don't, they will think of you to come and solve that pain. Okay, so the CRM obviously feeds into the email marketing. You can dice and slice your CRM. It's like taking a two-dimensional spreadsheet and turning it into a three-dimensional Rubik's cube that you can twist and turn. So you can dice and slice the data on your CRM, push it through to Mailchimp. Um, and then you're encouraging people to, to, to hear what you have to say because you're sending the right messages to the right people at the right time. Email marketing will feed back to your CRM. So terribly important with GDPR that people are, are able to unsubscribe. Um, make sure you cite the lawful reason for processing on all of your communication, um, but um, people need the ability to unsubscribe. So you can take people from, um, a, you a, reach out to people on your marketing. They can either sign up directly through a landing page on LinkedIn, on uh, MailChimp, and that feeds back into your CRM, or um, you can actually send um, people messages on um, MailChimp and encourage them to sign up to something else. All of that flows beautifully with Capture. Okay, so the idea of both of those really is to encourage people to go to your website, um, website contact forms can feed back into your CRM, check and see what the journey is on your website by using something like Google Analytics. And then that feeds through to an increase in sales, managing your pipeline, great customer information, and to an increase in net profits, which you're capturing in zero, which is saves hours and hours of work. And you can have some brilliant processes in um, Zero as well um, to make sure that um, people are paying on time, that your cash flow is sorted, your VAT return is easy and quick to do, and that feeds back into your goals. And the whole thing just goes round and round until your goals get bigger, your profit increases. So in summary, all of this basically makes your business more profitable, more consistent, it makes it more authentic, more knowledgeable, more trustworthy and more professional. And all those things are encouraging more people to work with you. OK, and it works. I had a client who has increased her net profit by 40 percent in one year and ongoing was increasing it, has increased it by 45 percent each year. So it really does work. And I've written a blog about it, um, so do pop over and have a look at that. So in today's webinar, we have really focused on 
why it's so important to picture your ideal client and how to do that. And um, do go and download my ebook that will help you with that. We've looked at processes that increase revenue and decrease costs, and we've looked at the holy grail of systems that really do help predominantly service-based businesses, um, Capture, MailChimp, and Xero. And we've looked at some other ones on top of that. So um, my particular favorite is Capture. So do um, have a chat with me and um, I can help show you how to, to, to set that up. I love it, I absolutely love it. <laughs> so, whoa, whistle stop tour, oh my goodness. Um, it's, there's so much to cover. And um, let's just have a look and see if there are any any questions. Okay. Oh, got an interesting question about B2B and B2C. Um, yes. Yeah, so when you have when you are a B2C business, then you have to encourage people to opt in to hear from you and to subscribe to hear from you. Be very granular in what you're offering them. Um, so I offer um, a, it's a growth hack bulletin, but it could also be called a newsletter. So people subscribe to receive that. And um, that means that I don't contact them about other things unless they've signed up to hear from me on that. So you can reach out and encourage people and invite people to opt in to hear from you. You can do that, we recommend three times before you then let them go. Um, and if you're B2B, then you can, of course, use legitimate interest if you have a business email address. So um, you have to make sure you undertake the three part legitimate interest test. But it means that you can reach out to B2B contacts using and citing legitimate interests as your lawful reason for processing. And as long as you give people the ability to unsubscribe, then um, that's fine. So you um, make sure you have a link to your privacy policy, cite the lawful reason for processing, give them the ability to unsubscribe and then you can communicate with them. Um, and hopefully the content you're sending out is of good enough quality and uh, of interest to them so that they won't want to unsubscribe from that. Okay, so I hope that helps. What's the um, a good click rate on Mailchimp? That's a good question. Um, we say that about 18 to 20 percent is actually a really good click rate on Mailchimp. Um, we are finding that um, emails are still going into people's junk, so um, sometimes people don't even get those emails. But if there's a 80 but then 18 percent click rate, then it means that actually people are listening and hearing um, your messages, um, which is exactly what you want um you know that's that's exactly what you need to happen okay so any other questions then do um do um email me with them okay so i'm just gonna turn the webcam off for a moment do subscribe to receive my growth hack bulletin download my avatar paper and really nail that ideal clients and thank you so much. Let's turn the webcam back on so that I can wave goodbye to you. Huge investment of energy, but I like helping people um, and helping them with their businesses. So if there's anything on today's uh, webinar that you um, are confused about or would like to drill down into, then please let me know. If you would like some help with any systems and processes, then let me know. That's what I love doing. And I also really enjoy people, helping people with their marketing strategy so we can actually help with that. Um, get a marketing strategy together, create a content plan, and um, think about how to activate that content plan. So lots of help um, out there from me for you. Um, and do drop me a line or book an appointment if you would like to have some of that help. So thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. And um, just, I need to say goodbye. So bye.